Hare Krishna, my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the Haven, which is, which is in Hive, southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, the incarnation of Krishna, Lord Krishna incarnates in the Kali Yuga in the form of his holy name and also in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam is glorified by Srila Sanatana Goswami after he received two months straight personal instruction by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the full gamut of philosophy of Krishna consciousness, the science of Bhakti Yoga. And he compiled this Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram in order to glorify the Bhagavatam which has given us the pastimes of Krishna. It goes like this. Sarva Shastri Bhipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpada Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drikprada <clears throat> Abaya and I are still, uh, you know, in still lingering cough thing. Don't mind, please. <clears> o <throat> oh, nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana. <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu Kali Dvandurita Aditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees O Master Srimad Bhagavatam You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali You are the exact image of Sri Krishna Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguru Man Mahadana. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu ta dayin atini chuchata kada hanamun chakadachin mam premna rit O oh, oh, <clears throat> bestower of saintliness of the unsaintly, O oh, exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we've reached the ninth chapter of the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, Maitreya Muni is <clears throat> well, it's Shukadeva Goswami describing all these things, by the way in case we didn't remember but um, he's explaining how Maitri Muni is answering the questions of Vidura, uh, giving de more details. And there are more details coming up also about the creation of the universe. We're starting with text 14. This is Lord Brahma um, offering his prayers to the Supreme Lord after he had completed his uh, 
austerities, his penances with love and devotion. Now the Lord has appeared and he's offering his prayers for uh, creative and impetus. <clears throat> Let me offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Transcendence who is eternally distinguished by his internal potency. His indistinguishable, impersonal feature is realized by intelligence for self-realization. I offer my obeisances unto him, who, by his pastimes, enjoys the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation. Could you hand me a sweater? Is that one of those? The best sweaters. Yeah, that one right there. Very good. <clears throat> Purport. The Supreme Lord is eternally distinguished <clears throat> from the living entities <clears throat> by his internal potency. <clears throat> Although he is also understood <clears throat> in his impersonal feature by self-realized intelligence. Devotees of the Lord, therefore, offer all respectful obeisances under the impersonal feature of the Lord. <clears throat> the word rasa is significant herein. The rasa dance is performed by Lord Krishna in the company of the cowherd damsels of Vrindavan. And the personality of Godhead <clears throat> And the personality of Godhead, Garbhodakashai Vishnu, is also engaged in rasa enjoyment with his external potency, by which he creates, maintains, and dissolves the entire material manifestation. Indirectly, Lord Brahma offers his respectful obeisances unto Lord Sri Krishna, who is factually ever engaged in rasa enjoyment with the gopis, as confirmed in the Gopala Tapani Upanishad in the following words, Parardante so bhujata gopavesho me purushak purdastad avir babuva. The distinction between the Lord and the living entity is definitely experienced when there is sufficient intelligence to understand his internal potency as distinguished from the external potency by which he makes possible the material manifestation. Text 15 <clears throat> Let me take shelter of the lotus feet of him whose incarnations, qualities and activities are mysterious imitations of worldly affairs. One who invokes his transcendental names, even unconsciously, at the time he quits this life, is certainly washed immediately of the sins of many, many births and attains him without fail. Purport The activities of the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are a kind of imitation of the activities going on in the material world. He is like an actor on a stage. An actor imitates the activities of a king on stage, although actually he is not the king. Similarly, when the Lord incarnates, he imitates parts with which he has nothing to do. In the Bhagavad Gita 4.14 it is said that the Lord has nothing to do with the activities in which he is supposedly engaged. Namam karmani limpanti name karma pale spriha. The Lord is omnipotent. Simply by His will, He can perform anything and everything. When the Lord appeared as Lord Krishna, He played the part of the son of Yashoda and Nanda, and He lifted the Govardhan hill, although lifting a hill is not His concern. He can lift millions of Govardhan hills by his, sim by his simple desire. He does not need to lift it 
with his hand. But he imitates the ordinary living entity by this lifting, and at the same time he exhibits his supernatural power. Thus his name is chanted as the lifter of Govardhan Hill, or Sri Govardhanadari. Therefore, he acts in his incarnations and his partiality to the devotees are all imitations only. Just like the acts of an expert dramatic player on a stage. He acts in that capacity, however, <clears throat> his acts in that capacity, however, are all omnipotent. And the remembrance of such activities of the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is as powerful as the Lord Himself. Ajamil remembered the holy name of the Lord, Narayana, by merely calling the name of his son, Narayana, and that gave him a complete opportunity to achieve the highest perfection of life. Text 16 <clears throat> Your Lordship is the prime root of the tree of the planetary systems. This tree has grown by first penetrating the material nature in three trunks, as me, as you, the Almighty, and as Shiva, for creation, maintenance, <clears throat> and dissolution. And we three have grown with many branches. Therefore, I offer my obeisances unto you, the tree of the cosmic manifestation. Wow. Purport. The tree of the cosmic manifestation is grossly divided into three worlds, the upper, lower, and middle planetary systems. And then it broadens into the cosmos of fourteen planetary systems with the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the Supreme Root. Material nature, which appears to be the cause of the cosmic manifestation, is only the agent or energy of the Lord. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 9.10 Maya Jakchena Prakriti Suyate Sachadacharam Acting under the superintendence of the Supreme Lord, material nature appears to be the cause of all creation, maintenance and dissolution. The Lord expands Himself into three Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva, for maintenance, creation, and destruction, respectively. Of the three principal agents controlling the three modes of material nature, Vishnu is the Almighty, even though He is within material nature for the purpose of maintenance. He is not controlled by the laws of material nature. The other two, Brahma and Shiva, although almost as greatly powerful as Vishnu, are within the control of the material energy of the Supreme Lord, <clears throat> as are such secondary agents as the Manus, Mrichi, and the great sages. Therefore the conception of many gods controlling the many departments of material nature is ill-conceived by the foolish pantheist. God is one without a second, and He is the primal cause of all causes. As there are many departmental heads of governmental affairs, so there are many heads of management of the universal affairs. Due to a poor fund of knowledge, the impersonalist does not believe in the personal management of things as they are. But in this verse, it is clearly explained that everything is personal and nothing is impersonal. We have already discussed this point in the introduction and it is confirmed here in this verse. The tree of the material manifestation is described in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita as an ashwata, an ashwata tree whose root is upward. 
we have actual experience of such a tree when we see the reflection or shadow of a tree on the surface of a reservoir of water. The reflection of the tree on the water appears to hang down from its upward roots. The description of the tree of creation in the, in the Bhagavad Gita proves that this material world is only a shadow of the reality, which is Parabrahman, Vishnu. In the manifestation of his internal potency, known as the Vaikuntha Lokas, the actual tree exists, and the tree of the material nature is only a shadow of this actual tree. The impersonalist theory that Brahman is void of all variegatedness is false, because the shadow tree described in the Bhagavad Gita cannot exist without there being a real tree. The real tree is situated in the eternal existence of the spiritual nature, full of transcendental varieties, and Lord Vishnu is the root of that tree also. The root is the same, the Lord, both for the real tree and the false. But the false tree is only the perverted reflection of the real tree. The Lord, being the real tree, is here offered obeisances by Brahma on his own behalf and also on behalf of Lord Shiva. Text 17 <clears throat> People in general all engage in foolish acts, not in the really beneficial activities enunciated directly by you for, the, for their guidance. As long as their tendency for foolish work remains powerful, all their plans in the struggle for existence will be cut to pieces. I therefore offer my obeisances unto him who acts as eternal time. Purport People in general are all engaged in senseless work. They are systematically unmindful of the real beneficial work, which is the devotional service of the Lord, technically called the Archana Regulations. The Archana Regulations are directly instructed by the Lord in the Narada Pancharatra and are strictly followed by the intelligent men who know well that the highest perfectional goal of life is to reach Lord Vishnu, who is the root of the tree called the cosmic manifestation. Also, in the Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, such regulative activities are clearly mentioned. Foolish people do not know that their self-interest is in realization of Vishnu. The Bhagavatam 7.5.30 through 32, says, Matirna Krishne Padatak Svatova Mito Vipadjeta Griha Brithanam Andanta Gobir Vishatam Tamisram Punak Punas Charvita Charvananam Nate Vidu Svargatakin Vigatim Hi Vishnu Durashaya Ye Bahur Art Manina Andayatandaya Upaniyamanas te pisha tantriam urudamni badaha Naishang matis tava urukramangrim sprishat janarto pagamo yadartaha Mahiya sang padadasho vishekam nishkinchananam navrinit nivrinit yavat Persons who are determined to totally rot in false material happiness cannot become Krishna-minded either by instructions from teachers, by self-realization, or by parliamentary discussions. They are dragged by the unbridled senses into the darkest region of ignorance, and thus they madly engage in what is called chewing the chewed. Because of their foolish activities, they are unaware that the ultimate goal of human life is to achieve Vishnu, the Lord of the Cosmic Manifestation, and so their struggle for existence is in the wrong direction of material 
civilization, which is under the external energy. They are led by similar foolish persons, just as one blind man is led by another blind man, and both fall into a ditch. Such foolish men cannot be attracted towards the activities of the Supreme Powerful, who is actually the neutralizing measure for their foolish activities, unless and until they have the good sense to be guided by the great souls who are completely freed from material attachment. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord asks everyone to give up all other occupational duties and absolutely engage in archana activities or in pleasing the Lord. But almost no one is attracted to such archana activity. Everyone is more or less attracted by activities which are conditions of rebellion against the Supreme Lord. The systems of jnana and yoga are also indirectly rebellious acts against the Lord. There is no auspicious activity except archana of the Lord. Jnana and yoga are sometimes accepted within the purview of archana when the ultimate aim is Vishnu and not otherwise. The conclusion is that only the devotees of the Lord are bona fide human beings, eligible for salvation. Others are vainly struggling for existence without any actual benefit. This is a very strong statement. The conclusion is that only the devotees of the Lord are bona fide human beings, eligible for salvation. Others are vainly struggling for existence without any actual benefit. Śrīla Prabhupāda ki jāi Text 18 <clears throat> Your Lordship, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you, who are in the indefatigable time and the enjoyer of all sacrifices. Although I am situated in, in an abode which will continue to exist for a time duration of two parardas, although I am the leader of all pla other planets in the universe, and although I have undergone and, and although I have undergone many, many years of penance for self realization, still I offer my respects unto you. Purport Brahma is the greatest personality in the universe because he has the longest duration of life. He is the most respectable personality because of his penance, influence, prestige, and so on. And still, he has to offer his respectful obeisances unto the Lord. Therefore, it is incumbent upon all others who are far, far below the standard of Brahma to do as he did and offer respects as a matter of duty. Text 19 O oh my Lord, by your own will you appear in the various species of living entities, lower animals, human beings, demigods and others to perform your transcendental pastimes. You are not affected by material contamination. You come, you come just to fulfill the obligations of your own principles of religion and therefore, O Supreme Personality, I offer my obeisances unto you for manifesting such different forms. Purport the Lord's incarnations in different species of life are all transcendental. He appears as a human being in his incarnations of Krishna, Rama, etc. But he is not a human being. Anyone who mistakes him for an ordinary human being is certainly not very intelligent, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 
9.11 Abhajananti mam mudha manushim tanumashritam The same principle is applicable when he appears as the hog or fish incarnation. They are transcendental forms of the Lord and are manifested under different necess certain necessities of his own pleasure in pastimes. Such manifestations of the, of the transcendental forms of the Lord are accepted by him mostly to enliven his devotees. All his incarnations are manifested whenever there is a need to deliver his devotees and maintain his own principles. Text 20 My Lord, you accept the pleasure of sleeping in the water of devastation where there are violent waves and you enjoy pleasure on the bed of snakes showing the happiness of your sleep to intelligent persons. At that time, all the universal planets are stationed within your abdomen. Purport Persons who cannot think of anything beyond the limit of their own power are like frogs in a well who cannot imagine the length and breadth of the great Pacific Ocean. Such people take it as legendary when they hear that the Supreme Lord is lying on his bed within the great ocean of the universe. They are surprised that one can lie down within water and sleep very happily, but a little intelligence can mitigate this foolish astonishment. There are many living entities within the ocean who also enjoy the, materially, the material bodily activities of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating. If such insignificant living entities can enjoy life within the water, why can't the Supreme Lord, who is all-powerful, enjoy sleeping on the cool body of a serpent amidst the turmoil of violent ocean waves? The distinction of the Lord is that His activities are all transcendental, and He is able to do anything and everything without being deterred by, the, by limitations of time and space. He can enjoy his transcendental happiness regardless of material considerations. Text 21 O object of my worship, I am born from the house of your lotus navel for the purpose of creating the universe by your mercy. All these planets of the universe were stationed within your transcendental abdomen while you were enjoying sleep. Now, your sleep having ended, your eyes are opening like lotuses blossoming in the morning. Purport Brahma is teaching us the beginning of Archana regulations from morning, 4 o'clock, to night, 10 o'clock. Early in the morning, the devotee has to rise from his bed and pray to the Lord. And there are other regulative principles for offering Mangalarati early in the morning. Foolish non-devotees, not understanding the importance of archana, criticize the regulative principles, but they have no eyes to see that the Lord also sleeps by His own will. The impersonal conception of the Supreme is so detrimental to the path of devotional service that it is very difficult to associate with the stubborn non-devotees who always think in terms of material conceptions. Impersonalists always think backwards. They think that because there is form in matter, spirit should be formless. Because in matter there is sleep, in spirit there cannot be sleep. And because the sleeping of the deity is accepted in archana worship, the archana is maya. All these thoughts are basically material. To think of matter either positively or negatively is still thinking materially. Knowledge accepted from the superior source of the Vedas is standard. Here in these verses, 
of the Srimad Bhagavatam, we find that Archana is recommended. Before Brahma took up the task of creation, he found the Lord sleeping on the serpent bed in the waves of the water of devastation. Therefore, sleeping exists in the internal potency of the Lord, and this is not denied by pure devotees of the Lord like Brahma and his disciplic succession. It is clearly said here that the Lord slept very happily within the violent waves of the water, thereby demonstrating that he is able to do anything and everything by his transcendental will and not be hampered by any circumstances. The Mayavadi cannot think beyond his material experience and thus he denies the Lord's ability to sleep within the water. His mistake is that he compares the Lord to himself and that comparison is also a material thought. <clears throat> the whole philosophy of the Mayavad school based on not this, not that, neti, neti, is basically material. Such thought cannot give one the chance to know the Supreme Personality of Godhead as He is. Text 22 Let the Supreme Lord be merciful towards me. He is, he is the one friend and soul of all living entities in the world, and by His six transcendental opulences He maintains all for their ultimate happiness. May He be merciful toward me, so that I, as before, may be empowered with the introspection to create, for I am also one of the surrendered souls who are dear to the Lord. Purport The Supreme, the Supreme Lord, Purushottama, or Sri Krishna, is the, maintainer of, is the maintainer of all in both the transcendental and material worlds. He is the life and friend of all because there is eternally natural affection and love between the living entities and the Lord. He is the one friend and well-wisher for all, and He is one without a second. The Lord maintains all the living entities everywhere by His six transcendental opulences, for which He is known as Bhagavan, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Brahma prayed for His mercy so that Brahma might be able to create the universal affairs as he did before. Only by the Lord's causeless mercy could he create both material and spiritual personalities like Marichi and Narada respectively. Brahma prayed to the Lord. <clears throat> Brahma prayed to the Lord. Wow mistake. Could you get me the <clears throat> the book? <clears throat> the beta base, you know, they made so many mistakes in uh, when it when it ch changes to uh, from one software to another. Nine three nine twenty two. It's right here. Brahma prayed to the Lord because 
he is very much dear to the surrendered soul. The surrendered soul knows nothing but the Lord, and therefore the Lord is very affectionate towards him. Text 23 The Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, is always the benefactor of the surrendered souls. His activities are always enacted through His internal potency, Rama, the Goddess of Fortune. I pray only to engage in His service in the creation of the material world, and I pray that I not be materially affected by my work, for thus I may be able to give up the false prestige of being the Creator. Purport In the matter of material creation, maintenance and destruction, there are three incarnations of the material modes of nature, Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara. But the Lord's incarnation as Vishnu in his internal potency, is the supreme energy for all activities. Brahma, who is only an assistant in the matter of creation, wanted to remain in his actual position as an instrument of the Lord instead of becoming puffed up by the false prestige of th thinking himself the Creator. That is the way of becoming dear to the Supreme Lord and receiving his full benediction. Foolish men want to take credit for, for all creations made by them, but intelligent persons know very well that not a blade of grass can move without the will of the Lord. Thus, all, all the credit for wonderful creations must go to him. By spiritual consciousness only can one be freed from the contamination of material influences and receive the benedictions offered by the Lord. Text 24 The Lord's potencies are innumerable. As He lies down in the water of devastation, I am born as the total material energy from the navel lake in which the Lord sprouts, in which the lotus sprouts. I'll read that again. The Lord's potencies are innumerable. As He lies down in the water of devastation, I am born as the total universal energy from the navel lake in which the lotus sprouts. I am now engaged in manifesting His diverse energies in the form of the cosmic manifestation. I therefore pray that in the course of my material activities I may not be deviated from the vibration of the Vedic hymns. PURPORT Every person engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord in this material world is prone to so many material activities. And if one is not strong enough to protect himself against the onslaught of material influence, he may be diverted from the spiritual energy. In the material creation, Brahma has to create all kinds of living entities with bodies suitable to their material conditions. Brahma wants to be protected by the Lord because he has to co contact many, many vicious living entities. An ordinary Brahmana may fall from the Brahma Tejas or the power of Brahminical excellence due to his association with many fallen, conditioned souls. Brahma, as the supermost Brahmana, is afraid of such a fall down, and therefore he prays to the Lord for protection. This is a warning for one and all in the spiritual advancement of life. Unless one is sufficiently protected by the Lord, he may fall down from his spiritual position. Therefore, one has to pray constantly to the Lord for protection and the blessing to carry out one's duty. Lord Chaitanya also entrusted his missionary work to his devotees 
and assured them of his protection against the onslaught of material influence. The path of spiritual life is stated in the Vedas to be like the edge of a sharpened razor. A little inattentiveness, a little inattentiveness may at once create havoc and bloodshed. But one who is a completely surrendered soul, always seeking protection from the Lord in the discharge of his entrusted duties, has no fear of falling into material contamination. Śrīla Prabhupāda ki jai. And that brings us to almost 8 o'clock. So we'll stop here, our readings for this day. The 1st of June, can you believe it? It is June 1st, 2022. And we'll start with text 25 tomorrow. Okay, Hare Krishna, all the devotees out there in cyberspace, please um, bless us with your uh, reflections on what you heard tonight. These beautiful prayers by Lord Brahma. First is from Sutter Esther. Sutter Esther. Sutter Esther. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Dandavat pronounce. Jai Ho to you. Jila Shila Prabhupada ki jai. <clears throat> and from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Haribo. Jai Guru Maharaj, the golden thread throughout my days. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> and from Bhakti Christopher? Yes, Bhakti Christopher. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please <clears throat> accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Yeah, all the glories to Prabhupada. Thank you for keeping us in touch with reality. Mm. Well, <clears throat> it's Srila Prabhupada who's keeping you in touch with reality, but I don't mind being the peon. As a matter of fact, I rather like it. Hare Krishna, thank you. And from Gopakanya. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and <coughs> all assembled sages. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada in your daily reading service of Sri the Prabhupada's books. Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Okay, we're waiting for the typists to type. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna. I so like these prayers of Brahma you know, begging for protection. He's so powerful. He's, Prabhupada said in the purport, he's almost as powerful as Krishna himself, but not as powerful. But compared to us, he's almost as powerful. And still he's praying for protection because he knows that nothing can happen properly or any other way without the will of the Lord without the sanction of the Lord Hare Krishna is anybody out there? are we here in the universe alone? someone from Rati Manjari Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Thank you for reading and bringing us this flawless wisdom. Hare Krishna. Well, thank you very much. And like I said, I'm just reading Srila Prabhupada's books out loud and relishing, associating with him and along with him all the different personalities that appear in the page of the Bhagavatam, including the personalities of Godhead. So, there you have it. This is absolute good fortune. Absolute good fortune.
So according to Lord Brahma, the glories of the Lord are unlimited and, in, and therefore inconceivable. Yes. From Goranga Gopal. From Goranga Gopal. Okay, let's hear it from the book distributors in Wales. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for reading tonight. I found it interesting how the Lord, although unlimitedly potent, imitates the activities mm. that human beings perform so we can relate to Him. Mm. Like His holding Govardhan Hill with His hand. Yes. <coughs> I noted that too while I was reading. He doesn't have to hold it up with his hand. He can just look at it and hold it up if he wants to. But that's what makes his pastimes so sweet, especially in the material world. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur uses this analogy. If, there's a, if you want to display a very beautiful, valuable jewel Generally, they will display it on a, a dark blue or black uh, velvet uh, cloth, and then the the brilliance of the of the stone is enhanced. But when it is uh, placed on a cloth which is very colorful and with busy, you know, patterns and everything, it loses its brilliance. So therefore, uh, the, the Lord's pastimes in the material world become even more brilliant because it's in the backdrop of the darkness of the material world and therefore it shines like uh, it, with a special effulgence. Hare Krishna. From Subarao Raj Gopal. Yes, Subarao Raj Gopal. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for reading the beautiful prayers by Lord Sri Brahma. In three nine twenty four, the last verse you read, there are two very significant points to keep meditating upon. Quote, Unless one is sufficiently protected by the Lord, he may fall down from his spiritual position. Therefore one has to pray constantly to the Lord for protection and the blessing to carry out one's duty. Lord Chaitanya also entrusted his missionary work to his devotees and assured them of his protection against the onslaught of material affection. In the second quote, A little inattentiveness may at once create havoc and bloodshed, but one who is a completely surrendered soul always seeking protection from the Lord in the discharge of his entrusted duties, has no fear of falling into material contamination. Kirtaniya Sadahari is the only way. Thanks for engaging us by your reading. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Yes, uh, Prabhupada was our exemplar, the founder Acharya of our movement. He set the example in all activities, even in this one, you know. He, he prayed, he said that he prayed constantly not to fall again into Maya. He's a liberated soul, he never fell into Maya, but he prays like that. And uh, therefore he's protected always. Maya can't touch him. So if we stay with that submissive attitude, you know, and with a healthy fear, the devotees are fearless because they can do anything for Krishna. They can, they can adopt any activities, they can uh, absorb any uh, and, and cross over any obstacles, uh, but still they maintain a healthy fear of Maya. And therefore, Maya cannot touch them because Krishna so much appreciates their service. Hare Krishna. And Brahma is no exception. Even though he's the most powerful personality in the whole universe, with as we heard the, 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 the duration of life of two paradas, 
that's uh, uh, 311 trillion years and, and, and change <laughs> and a few more to boot maybe, maybe 80 billion more to boot so he can, who can be more uh, secure than him still he prays every day to not fall down Hare Krishna. So with that humble service attitude and in offering all you know, respect to the Lord and glorification, uh, one can live in this world uh, peacefully. And if one becomes advanced enough in love for Krishna, then Krishna will enjoy uh, the, the words of that devotee in order to correct Krishna. You know, he'll appear before that devotee as a child and let the devotee, you know, protect and control and, and correct uh, the Lord. And he enjoys that even more than the prayers of Brahma and the Vedic hymns. This is inconceivable. Hare Krishna. This is Lord Chaitanya's mercy that we even have access to that thought what to speak of realize it Hare Krishna Bhakta Oliver yes Bhakta Oliver Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Sri the Prabhupada Jai Hare Bo we are listening to the daily readings in the car on our way to an Airbnb oh Daitari Hari is appreciating text 15 one quote, one who invokes his transcendental names even unconsciously at the time he quits this life is certainly washed immediately of the sins of many, many births and attains him without fail. Yes. Therefore, it pays us to think of Krishna 24-7 because we don't know when we're going to leave. Hare Krishna. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. I remember how, when I went to Vrindavan in 2016, after 14 years, and I went to your Bhaktivedanta ashram at Govardhan, I was told that you and Vaisheshika Prabhu were reading the Srimad Bhagavatam 11th canto out loud to a room of devotees. My friend and I sat down underneath the window in the courtyard and tried to hear as much as we could. As I sat down there, I remember thinking to myself, why are they simply reading the books out loud and not giving classes? I was not used to this practice. <laughs> now, six years later, and having received the matchless fortune of attending the daily readings, I feel so grateful that somehow or other I have been blessed by getting a tiny bit of taste for hearing Srila Prabhupada directly from you. It seems that the more I surrender to this hearing, the more I get to appreciate this process. All this is by mercy only. Hare Krishna. That was a lovely reflection. I thank you so much. And it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. When we hear uh, Srila Prabhupada's books read out loud, in the company of other like-minded devotees, it is extremely powerful. It's non-different than Harinam Sankirtan. It is Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna. Hare Mandari says Jai. Jai Ho. Nineteen years. We did that during Kartik for nineteen years. It's called developing a good habit. <laughs> you know, we have so many bad habits when we're while well, while we're living in the material world. But it's possible to develop good habits by practice. Practice makes perfect. 
anyway, I, I'm, I'm planning to go for Kartik. Vaishashika Prabhu is definitely going for Kartik to, to do this, this Maha Yagya, five hours a day of reading Prabhupada's books out loud. And uh, I hope I can go. I can't promise because I don't know if I can travel that far. And, you know. And another thing is that I've become so attached to, to doing what we're doing right now, to being with you in this uh, format of, of reading the books and then reflecting every day. Uh, if I go to India, I can't do every day there because the internet is just too, in Govardhan especially, it's too dodgy. And uh, I want to read the books so that it's clear. And since I came here and we have a good internet connection, it's clear. Uh, that's why I'm redoing some of the books I did before, because uh, you know the, the connection is very clear. But yes, I'm very much appreciating you, the realization you had while you were there that year, uh, listening to the readings of Prabhupada's books. Hare Krishna. This is also from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. From tonight's reading, this struck me. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord asks everyone to give up all other occupational duties and absolutely, absolutely engage in archana activities or in pleasing the Lord. But almost no one is attracted to such archana activity. Everyone is more or less attracted by activities which are conditions of rebellion against the Supreme Lord, end quote. Amazing how Srila Prabhupada names all our activities unrelated to Krishna, unrelated to Krishna consciousness, conditions of rebellion. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. And anything done uh, without doing it for Krishna's pleasure in a way that's pleasing to Krishna is sinful activity. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Rati says quite stark. Quite stark, yes. From Jagamohan. Yes, Jagamohan. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj and dear devotees, please accept my respectful obeisances. Listening to the humility and sincerity of Lord Brahma's prayers, it had me reflect on the story you told yesterday, how one time a devotee asked Sri the Prabhupada what he was praying about. Prabhupada said he was praying to Lord Nityananda that he may never fall into Maya again. The devotee then inquisitively said to Prabhupada that he thought a pure devotee could never fall into Maya. Prabhupada replied, yes, this is true. It's because a pure devotee is always praying that he may never fall into Maya. <laughs> Thank you once again for tonight's reading and continued association. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. All glories to Sri Prabhupada and all glories to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. All right, as usual, I thank you all for your re wonderful reflections and your association and your appreciation. Everybody needs to be encouraged. And I get so much encouragement for you. I get so much strength to carry this on day after day. I thank you very much. And there's somebody else here that's saying something. Two short comments. Rati says, We pray that your desire to be in Govardhan together with your best friend, this Kartik, may be fulfilled. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And from Subara Rajagopal. Yes, Subara. Hare Krishna, while you mentioned the mood of Lord Brahma and his divine grace through the Prabhupada, question came up. As I am deeply entrenched in Maya, what should be my prayer? Well, I think, I think the best thing uh, is, is first to choose prayers from these books. 
that resonate with you. You know, uh, some, some, some things we read particularly resonate with us. And if you select some prayers that, that, that resonate with you and then uh, recite them in front of the Lord, in front of your altar that you have at home or in front of the temple the deity, uh, that will teach you to have the right mentality and then to offer your own prayers. Because if you follow in the footsteps of the great souls, you know, there's ways to offer prayers. There's, there's things to say. There's things that we shouldn't say. And once we learn the art of prayer, uh, then we can say our own spontaneous prayers. Hare Krishna. Jama Ratur says Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Jama. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samabeda bhakta brinda ki jai. Gor premanandi hari hari bo. See tomorrow night, same time, same place, same topic, as Brahma con continues to offer his heartfelt prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and teach us how to pray. Hare Krishna, see you tomorrow. <laughs>